Chairman, dear colleagues, I would like to thank the society for the privilege of this podium. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We can take a few questions. Probably. I have no disclosure regarding this talk. Uh, in uh, there is a quite difference when you look at the specimen on the right and left. On the right side, you can see a complete mesocolic excision with the preservation of the planes, and on the right side is a standard uh, right hemicolectomy. When we look at their oncologic outcomes, there is a quite variations in both uh, cases. This is a study from Stockholm and UK, and both shows that, is there any pointer there? No, All right. No point, okay, don't worry. On the graphics on both show that there is a 25% survival difference depending on the surgeon A and B. So it's a quite big survival difference. There is a quite variable surgery as you see on the right hand corner, it's a wedge resection and the second one is a rib and the third one is a perfect mesocolic excision. These are the same cancers so you can do variable surgery on each tumor, but the mesocolic excision that, that we should must aim for it. And don't forget, there is a unique anatomy and lymphatic drainage depending on the side of the tumor, and the operations depends on the side of the tumor. So there are seven different locations of the colon cancer and seven that has different uh, lymphatic flow. And there is another problem on the right uh, and the colon cancer. It is a local recurrence problem. This is a randomized study from UK. This is a classic trial. And they look at their 10-year local recurrence rate. On the right hemicolectomy, it is almost 15% compared to 5% in the randomized trial. So it is a big issue uh, in the colon as well. This is a perfect mesorectal, mesorectal specimen done by Bill Hill, shiny specimen preserving the mesorectum. And the embryological planes are same when we look at the transverse colon, right colon, and rectum. But we are not talking at the same sort of specimen in the colon. What we should aim for is the anatomical dissection along the embryological tissue plane taking the tumor, draining lymphatics, and lymph nodes all together with the preservation of the mesocolic surgery, which was defined by Hohenberger. And it includes the preservation of mesocolic plane of sharp dissection of the parietal plane and removing of the central lymph nodes all together with the specimen. We did some anatomical study in order to look at the uh, variations of the right and left colon, and there is, we've documented uh, quite wide variations of uh, vascular variations, because in order to do a central vascular ligation, you have to follow the uh, draining uh, arteries, and, uh, and you should do a complete proper dissection along the vascular particles. And again, when you look at the colonic lymph node flow, it is not more than 10 centimeters to the pericolonic nodes. But when you look at the transverse hepatic and splenic flexure carcinoma, almost 8% might have gastroeploic lymph node dissection, and lymph node metastasis. So in order to remove the transverse or hepatic or splenic flexure carcinoma, you should also get out the uh, omentum with the specimen, at least 10 centimeter with the specimen. This is a transverse colon carcinoma, and be, make sure that you have to take the infra pancreatic region lymph nodes with the specimen as well. This is one of another study showing the transverse colon cancer up to 16% has gastroeploic lymph node metastasis, and up to 20% has infra a pancreatic region uh, metastasis. So we have to take those lymph nodes while we are doing the complete mesocolic excision. 
This is one of the randomized trials showed that even in stage three colon cancer, there is a survival advantage as the number of negative lymph nodes retrieval is increased. It is true for M1 and N2 disease, and this is another data from UK in stage three disease, as the number of negative lymph nodes improves, survival improves. This is the specimen that we should aim for sickle or ascending, proximal ascending colon carcinoma. Preservation of the mesocolic plane and the high vascular ligation. We are talking about grading of the mesorectum with complete mesorectal and incomplete mesorectal. And Phil Kirk and Nick West also grade the colonic specimen, and they also grade in the same sort of with the rectum. And when you look at those specimen, the surgical specimen quality also highly important when you look at the oncologic data. As the, uh, there is a significant difference if you do an improper mesocolic dissection and rip the specimen. And this is another study, a population-based study, the ones that did the rectal cancer study. Stockholm group also did a colon cancer project study. It's a population-based study and showed that even in stage three disease, complete mesocolic excision improves the survival. And this is echoed by a study from uh, Denmark. And also they look at their five-year outcome for local recurrence rate, it is better in the complete mesocolic excision group. And this is another prospective but non-randomized data from China, again, uh, improved survival in complete mesocolic excision group. And this is our study from before and after Werner Hohenberger visited our university and statistically significant survival difference after we adapted complete mesocolic excision at our university. And this is a recent publication in JEMA, and it showed that a significant improvement if we do a complete mesocolic excision and decrease uh, the local recurrence rate in a three and five year follow-up group. Now I just want to talk a, a couple of bit for uh, the management of splenic flexure carcinoma. And we did, a, a, again, an expert Delphi consensus, and we found that there is no universal agreement and standardization on specific definitions of each colonic segment. And when we did our study, we asked our colleagues, which uh, is the splenic flexure carcinoma? And there is a 55% moderate consensus on 10 centimeter from both sides of the angle. And when we ask the surgical management, we ask them whether or they do total or extended right or extended left or segmental left upper colectomy. 72% of the experts uh, did uh, rate the uh, segmental left hemicolectomy. And these are the data from the literature uh, no significant difference in terms of oncologic outcomes when compared segmental colectomy, extended right hemicolectomy, and left hemicolectomy. And this is again uh, a similar data from uh, De Gulli et al. And no significant difference between segmental and extended resection. Overall, five year survival is more or less the same. And these are the meta analyses from two different groups. And again, same results. There is no difference in the extended right hemicolectomy, left hemicolectomy, and segmental colectomy. This is what we usually do in minimally invasive surgery, removing the lymph nodes along the inferior mesenteric artery at the root of the middle colic artery and ligation of the left colic and the right branch, left branch of the middle colic and removing the omentum with it. We shouldn't aim a specimen like that. We have to remove all the meso intact with the specimen. There is no doubt that this is a masterpiece, but the masterpiece for the patients are those. We have to do proper, complete mesocolic excision in order to improve the patient's 
outcome. One must should not omit the first colorectal cancer resection is lost forever, and failure to do so cannot be corrected by any form of adjuvant therapy. I just would like to thank my colleagues who helped me to build up this talk and would like to thank the society for the privilege of this podium. Thanks. Thank you.